Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful and oh-so-festive neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are delighted that you're part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Podchaser, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Dolov Zaharoni. He is here to celebrate far beyond the sun. Before we invite Dolov into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Bradley's Dragon, a fantastic middle grade novel by Patrick Matthews. We know it's fantastic because it is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Set in a Florida trailer park, this middle grade fantasy adventure follows a young boy named Bradley Nash whose world is turned absolutely upside down on his 12th birthday. The hunters are coming, and if Bradley doesn't figure out exactly who and what he is, everything he's known will be destroyed. Our panel of educators, parents, and kids love this book. I mean, one of them wrote, I seriously love this book. I could barely put it down. They all said that it was one of those great page turners that is just so fast paced and really, really fun. Bradley's Dragon, a certified great read by Patrick Patrick Matthews. Check it out today. It's a great addition to any family library and would make a fantastic holiday gift. Bradley's Dragon by Patrick Matthews. Join us right now from the great state of North Carolina. We are here to celebrate his debut picture book, Far Beyond the Sun. Please welcome to the show, Dolov Zaharoni. Dolov, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Jed. I'm excited to have you on. I I love having the opportunity to, to celebrate an author's Debut book. Um, what's it? What's it feel like to have your your first book published and out there? It it is an amazing feeling. Um, I mean, I've been writing stories for years and years, um, and only when um, you know my first child was born, um, and I thought, you know, how I want to, I, how I want her to see the world, I started to think maybe I can, you know. Think about moving from just writing short stories to kids, children's books and children's stories. And then I started sitting down and it took me, you know, I wrote the story a couple of years ago, but then it took a little bit longer for me to move to the next step and, and actually publish it. But once I was there, um, uh, it, it moved pretty quickly. And when it was out, you know, if you've seen the, when the illustrator sent me the, the first, um, uh, revision of the, the illustration. It, it was amazing to see, you know, what you've been working on for so long. Um, like, I'll call it alive, uh, in that sense. And, uh, I was amazed. Uh, she also took it to the next step. She, she, she was, she's amazing. She took it way beyond what I could imagine it would look like. And then I was like, this is, this is perfect. This is amazing. And then the second great feeling is, you know, when you get those like, reviews out of nowhere, you know, on Amazon, like people I don't know who are like, I love your book. I just read your book. It's just, this is so great. I'm reading it to, you know, my kids, my grandkids. I get emails at work from people I work with who are like, hey, just want to let you know, I just, I got your book. I read your book to my grandkid and she loves it. We read it every evening. And like, this is amazing. You know, I never thought it would come that far. That is really amazing. When you were creating the book and and going through the process of, you know, working with the illustrator, and we have to give a big big shout out to your illustrator too. What's what's your illustrator's name? Uh, Marianne Nasayef. She's uh, from Egypt, mm-hmm. uh, which is a uh, kind of funny story because I'm originally from Israel. So if you think about going 50 years back and an Israeli collaborating with an Egyptian illustrator, uh, would sound pretty you know, funny to a lot of people. Now it it seems obvious to me, you know, um, and she did sh- such an amazing job. And and that that is something to celebrate too. I mean, 
you know, I am old enough. I was alive 50 years ago when it was unthinkable that uh, a person from Israel, a person from Egypt would be able to sit down at the same table together. Um, and, and we have made, made that progress and, and that's really wonderful. Um, one of the things that, that, that I'm wondering about, you know, you're hearing about these, you know, you're getting these reviews and people are calling you and, um, where my, my grandchild and I are reading this every night and it's so wonderful. Does it ever occur to you that, you know, over time, there are going to be thousands and thousands of families cuddled up on the couch reading Far Beyond the Sun together. You know, it's funny because I was thinking about this, I think, yesterday. The exact same thing. I was like, you know what? There are people. I mean, I, I put my books. It's on like Amazon and other formats, but it's also in, in stores here in, in North Carolina. And and when I get, you know, I'll, <laughs> we'll talk about it like that, but I get a check from the store, I know that a book is sold, but on the other end, I know that somebody who I don't know is sitting with my book somewhere, reading it to, it, to their kids. And, and that's such an amazing feeling to think about, you know, how you can influence and how you can get to other people, uh, with something you just, you know, set down in your, in your, you know, um, kitchen or your, uh, dining room or your, living room and just, you know, thought about this story and just wrote it down and put it on, on into Word or on paper and created it. It's an amazing, amazing feeling. Just to, Sometimes it's even harder to grasp um, uh, how far, <laughs> far beyond the sun, right? How far this can go and, and how many people this can reach. And, and um, it's been really, it, it's an amazing, amazing experience and feeling. So tell us about the story we'll experience when we sit down and read Far Beyond the Sun together. Um, you know what? I can let me go back even and tell you the, the background story sure. for the book. Um, so about a year ago, I took my daughter, who's now uh, uh, almost five, uh, for camping for the first time. We have a lot of spots here um, in the area. Uh, we actually have a lake, a lake five minutes away from here. So I just took her for camping. We walked, you know, around the, the, the woods and she asked me all kinds of, you know, those four year old questions, you know, if, if snails die, do they get buried with their house? That's how she, she called it. Or, you know, is the lake bigger than the ocean? Um, stuff like that. But then, and, and, and most times I have some kind of answer for this. But then when at, at the evening when we were lying on our sleeping bags, I was, we were looking at the stars and I was trying to explain her about the solar system, the stars. Um, and so, and then she asked me, uh, daddy, can I go beyond the sun? Can I be taller than the sun? And it was like, cut off guard. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what to answer. And I, I, I said, yes, if you want to be an astronaut. <laughs> Um, but I wasn't, I didn't feel, uh, okay with that answer. And when, and it, it bugged me, it, it stuck to me. And, and when we got back home, I was like, you know what? Uh, maybe there's a way. And I, I sat down and started writing the book. And, um, and then the story is about a boy who wants to be taller than the sun. And, um, he, you know, he starts by climbing, you know, the, the play, the place at, at the backyard, you know, saying, Oh, I'm taller, taller than everything around me. I'm probably taller than the sun. And his, um, friend or sister, some people see it as a friend. Some people see it as a sister. Uh, I kind of left it open. Um, tells him, Hey, you're not, you're not taller than the sun. Look up. She's so high. Then he goes back home trying to find a solution. He opens a book that his grandfather gave him about, you know, the world. And he looks on all the tallest places and buildings and he travels the world and, and, and learns about, you know, the history, geography, he learns a little bit about math and science. Um, and then at the end, he decides that he, if he climbs the Everest, he'll be taller than the sun because that's the tallest place, place uh, on earth, right? So for a four-year-old, I mean, that's the tallest place, has to be taller than the sun. Still doesn't work. His uh, friend slash uh, sister tells him it's still far away. And his dad finally finds a solution for him. They go to the attic and there he has a telescope 
and by looking through the telescope, he's able to see all the stars and go beyond the sun. See, you know, the stars are way farther than the sun. And that's how he ended up, you know, getting his wish fulfilled. Very cool, very cool. That's um, uh, fun, and uh, it, it, it sounds like a great way to talk to kids about imagination and and about believing in your dreams and, and going for your dreams. Yeah, that's exactly what I was uh, aiming here. And, you know, I listened to your last episode um, with um, – Barry Meltzer, I think. Brad, or Brad Meltzer, yeah. Brad Meltzer. And he was talking about the heroes and how, you know, it's okay to show that they fail. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 then I thought about it and, I, I, you know, and, and I thought that actually in my book, he had he goes through the same progression. He keeps failing, trying to get his, you know, to his goal. But at the end, after trying again and again and again, he was able to ask for help. And through, you know, using technology, science, and a little bit of imagination, he was able to reach the goal. And it's okay to fail, but you, you should try again and again until you find a way to get to your goal. Yeah. And that's part of, you know, something that I didn't think about the book up until now. And now I think that's another thing that comes into play in the, behind the, the story of the book. Well, I, you know, I think I, you, you make a good point, and, and it's something that we've talked about a lot here on the podcast is just the importance of, of helping our kids learn how to be resilient and helping them learn how to be gritty and, and to pick themselves up when they fall down. Uh, there, there are so many parents out there who don't want their kids to fall, and no one wants their kids to fall or to fail or to, to yeah. experience mm -hmm. disappointment, but it is a part of life, and and it's – through those failures and through the, the process of getting up and trying again that we build up that grit and uh, make our kids stronger. So I think it's really wonderful that, that, that you're giving parents a, a, a tool, a resource that they can use to start talking about this with their kids at a very young age. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, that, um, you know, um, as a parent myself, right, I have two kids and another one on the way. Uh, it's always that trying to see, you know, where should I give them the hand and where should I just tell them get up mm -hmm. and deal with it on your own. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think, you know, it's hard to tell. It's always hard to tell what kind of influence I will do. I usually try to lean towards the, the second, to, to, you know, if, as they learn and experience on their own, their body their physical state of mind, I think it helps them to develop faster and deal mm -hmm. with things um, easier mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, and then also learn that there are ways to, you know, if you can't get there, you can try to look around and find ways to help you. I know my son is actually practicing it. If he can get to the cupboard to, to get a, you know, a cup, he'll go take the chair, move the chair all the, all the way over there, climb on the chair, Get to open the the open the cabinet and take the cup, right? So and he learned it on his own. I didn't mm -hmm. never told him about it, but I was like, this is exactly what you need to do in life. You know, if you get stuck, before you drop everything and just let go, or you know, just uh, decide to give up, look around and see what tools, what options do you have that may help you to get to what you need to where you need to get to. Yeah. You know, you reminded me as you as you were talking about that that whole idea of, of as a parent, when do I go and 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 do something for kids? When do I pull myself back and let them struggle and work this out themselves? I was reminded life has a has a funny way of of teaching me. I'm, I'm very happy that I have you know um, I've angels looking down on me and uh, let me fail when I need to and. I was working with kids with um, severe developmental disabilities, and when I first started working with them, I would do everything for them because I would see them struggle to try to feed themselves or to move, and I would feel sorry for them. And, and the people I was working with said, no, you let them do it themselves. And you know, and I just mm -hmm. couldn't. It would break my heart. I'm like, oh, you're so cruel, and, and we can do that. We can help these kids. And then I had an accident. And suddenly I was on crutches and there was a lot of things that I couldn't do for myself. 
and that frustrated me. And when people started doing things for me, that made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. no, let me do this. I'm going to do I it. Know. I don't care if it takes me an hour. Let me do it. And uh, that really opened up my eyes. Sometimes I need those lessons. And, you know, thankfully, yeah. thankfully I, know. I, w- I get them. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about is that the, the way that you chose to publish this book, mm-hmm. um, and you, you call it your open code publishing approach. Can you talk a little bit about that and why you made that decision? Yeah, sure. Um, open code or open source. I work in the tech industry. Um, that's very common. So the tech listeners will probably say, oh, yeah. I know what it means, but probably not sure about what it means regarding it to the book. But for those who are not familiar with that term, open source in the tech industry means that you, you know, when you write a software or an application, you, there's a code behind it, right? When a coder writes it down. So that whole notion is that the, the source code of that software, that application is open for everybody to use. Um, if we take an example, most like Apple products are not. They are very um, secure and concealed because that's their IP, intellectual intellectual property. But um, other, you know, companies and softwares are, you know, they're given an op- they're given open source so people can use it and share it. What I took from this and I said, you know what, I'm we're listening to the book during the coronavirus time. It's um, not that easy to go to the store and look at books, and when you could go to Amazon. I don't think you even get a taste of the book that you can really feel that this is what you want to read or you want your, you think your kid would like. Um, you, you only get a snapshot. So I just took the entire book and I created an animation out of it. Uh, there's an animation on YouTube. It's available for everybody. The whole book is over there. It's basically free. Um, and you can look at the book, see if it, you know, if fits, you know, what you think you, you like, you need, your kid would like, you can show it to them. And if you like it, go ahead and buy it. I would love that. If not, that's great. You know, if you still like the book, you can't, you're not able to buy it for any kind of reason. Totally understand that. I'll be happy if you could just leave me a review. That'll be great. And, but you can still get access to the book without purchasing it first. Um, and that that's the whole vision that, you know, give people the opportunity to fully experience the book before you buy it, you know, try it before you buy it kind of thing. Uh, even though you can't go to the store or you're not sure about it in Amazon, you still have access to the whole thing and it's over there. Um, you can find it through, uh, just search, search for it online on Google or YouTube or through uh, Squidio Publishing, uh, which is the publishing company that I use. Wow, that's a... Uh... Fascinating. Do you think it was your experience in the tech world that kind of gave you this idea? Or was it more from a philanthropic place? <laughs> Good question. That's a, that's both. So I also work a lot um, with nonprofits. Um, Squeedeal uh, Publishing is part of Squeedeal, which is a company I own um, that supports nonprofits uh, and helps them to generate donations for an e-commerce platform. Um, so I've been working for many years with nonprofits and, and you know, I, I feel for them. So I felt that, you know, I can give something to the readers as well on my end um, and and hopefully they'll give back to me. Um, I learned it from, there's a, a scientist that I follow uh, from Israel, Future Scientist, and both of his books was on this kind of the same idea of open source. He basically wrote the book and send the draft to everybody who will, who will want to read it to give them, you know, their opinions, their ideas. So it was kind of an open, crowded, open source kind of thing, progression. And he actually wrote the book with the crowd. So I didn't write the book with the crowd. Obviously, I have a lot of people who looked at it. Mm-hmm. But I decided that I'm going to share it with everybody. Um, sp- specifically, it happened during the corona when I, I was like, people are losing jobs. People can't, you know, they don't have money, um, but they still want to give something to their kids because the kids are stuck at home. They need to do homeschooling. And I think this book comes in very, very well with the whole um, home, homeschooling um, idea because I got a lot of great feedback from teachers saying this fits perfectly with, you know, the K through two or three curriculum. Mm-hmm. 
uh, with all the things that it touches in there. Um, so I thought, you know, this could be a great service for all the people who, just like me, got stuck with their kids, you know, and, and they can't afford to buy a book right now, right? Or they want to make sure that the, that the kids will like the book before they buy it. So here's something to give uh, to them, you know. Great idea. And I think, you know, as we, we look ahead, I, I think, I, I have this hope for humanity and a belief in humanity that people will respect the, uh, you know, the, the, the rights of creators, whether it's in music or, or children's books or adult books, and that, you know, if they have access to something and they like it and they get value from that book or from that song, then they'll go out and, and support the, the artist in, in whatever way they can. Um, and I think that's a model that, that a lot of folks are going to be moving to because, you know, it, it's just so easy to gain access to, to songs and music and movies. Yeah. Um, and uh, this might be a great way for parents to just kind of start that conversation with kids. Uh, you know, hey, we read this book and we, we read Dolov's book online. He offered it to us for free. Did we like it? Yeah. But do you think we should? buy it we don't have to we have it for free but do you think we should buy it so Dolov can uh, feed his family and maybe write some more books in the future mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's a way that we can start building that that kind of ethic in our kids at a very young age yeah respect you know the author respect the product understand what the, the meaning behind because books are in a way giving to them I mean my kids have tons of books and I'm sure that you know, thinking about it now, as you put it, they, it's just giving. It's there, mm -hmm. right? They don't think about the process that goes behind it. Mm -hmm. Maybe my kids are a little bit more aware of that now that I'm a offer myself, but um, they get a little bit more understanding of, of what it means to uh, buy a book. Mm -hmm. uh, not You get to enjoy it, but you get to support somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... I, I, I forgot to mention it, but also part of, of what I'm doing, part of the, you know, the nonprofit side of things, um, I decided to uh, give away a, a, a dollar from each book sale to a nonprofit that supports uh, children who don't have access to education oh. in the U.S. Um, I thought it would be a great another way because I have, you know, all the rights and all the authority to do what I want with it. I can do that and, and support somebody in need that don't have access to education. And with that can also teach the kids that, yeah, there are other kids out there that they don't have access to school. They don't go to school. Mm -hmm. They don't, they can't buy the, those books just like you have. Um, but this book that we just bought will help them to hopefully get to a place where they are happy and they are smiling and, you know, they, they, they can be just like you. Mm -hmm. But right now they can't. And what a great way to, as as you're encouraging kids to to reach far beyond the sun in their own lives, and and to have the humility to to ask for help, to also empower them to think, hey, you by reading this book, by by our family supporting and buying this book, we're helping somebody else reach far beyond the sun. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's that's you, you nailed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Dolph, tell everybody where they can go to um to to find the book, find out more about you, find out uh, get on your mailing list so when your future books are available, they'll they'll be the first to know. And and also, um, just take a, a, a take a advantage of your open source, um, uh, idea. Sure. Um, so um, the book is available on Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, uh, Apple, Kobo, you know, all those. Um, it's available internationally as well. Um, and um, on uh, Squeedeal.com, Squeedeal Publishing. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and obviously on YouTube. You can find the the, um, the animation of the book on YouTube. Just type Far Beyond the Sun and my name, uh, because if you go just Far Beyond the Sun, there's another musician that I like who has the same song, <laughs> with the same name, has a song by the same name. Um, but if you type Far Beyond the Sun and my first name in Google, 
you're probably going to find it pretty fast. And, and let everybody know how you spell your first name. Yeah, my first name is Dolev, so D-O-L-E-V. Ah, and I've been mispronouncing it. I pr- apologize. So we've had a great time speaking to the author of Far Beyond the Sun, Dolev Zaharoni. Hey, Dolev, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Ed. I, I, I appreciate so much uh, coming on the, uh, onto your show. It's been great, and hope to come back again and tell, talk about my next book. Absolutely. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Oscar Redden the Fourth. He is here to celebrate Albert the Albatross. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Hey, we also want you to make sure that you join us uh, during the week between Christmas and New Year's Day. We're going to be reading in the new year. We are so excited. We have so many fantastic authors that are going to be part of this amazing virtual family book fair. It is Super, we have some great performances, some great do-it-together activities. What a great way to say goodbye, 2020. We don't need you anymore. And hello, 2021. It's going to be a fantastic year. It has to be better than this year. That's Reading in the New Year. You can find out more by going to our website, readinginthenewyear.com. Hey, I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Dolab Zaharoni. Be sure to check out Far Beyond the Sun. also want to thank our sponsor, Bradley's Dragon by Patrick Matthews. Check it out today. It is a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Be a great addition to your family library. Super middle grade novel. I also want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. But most of all, we want to thank you. We mentioned how difficult 2020 was. It was difficult for all of us. More difficult for, for some. But it was certainly uh, really difficult for families. And you have brought your family through. You really have. Think about it. You have have kept your family together. You've taught your kids. You've sat in as, uh, you know, stepped in as teacher, uh, entertaining your kids, playing with them. You've become your kids' best friend. You, 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 you're playing games. You're spending time together. That's a real gift. You've been an amazing parent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The love that you have for your kids is making the world a better place. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.